nice pun with the picking up steam. So the, the applications I see, you know, getting the most interest from nuclear outside of electric applications are really around industrial process heat and hydrogen production. Uh, so nuclear has some unique capabilities to produce both. And particularly with some of the advanced reactors we see coming out, they're really capable of reaching some of those higher temperatures. They really unlock these industrial uh, demand curves that we haven't had access to before. So when we think about hard to abate sectors, I think it's important to first think about why they're so hard to abate. I think they really fall into two categories. The first are industries where they require substantial amounts of, of heat. Uh, and so when we think about things like petrochemical processing, uh, chemical production in general, so making plastics, those types of things, uh, all the way to concrete manufacturing, they all require si significant amounts of heat. And you know, there are ways you can get heat with electricity. You can use an electrolyzer or some other kind of intermediary but nuclear power is really able to uh, provide that heat directly. So you don't have to go through that intermediary. You can use heat directly from the advanced reactor. And so that creates a lot of efficiencies for these companies that are, are looking at, at utilizing nuclear energy. The other piece for hard to debate sectors is really timing. So when we think about energy production, particularly clean energy production, um, you know, renewables uh, are intermittent sources. And while they have to have a, a role in the grid, there are these sectors that require power 24 hours a day. And so for them, reliability is key. And, and the reliability of nuclear is, is second to none. It's the highest capacity factor in the US. And we see that with our existing fleet and we expect to see that with our advanced reactors as well. The great thing about some of these non-electric applications is that while we talk a lot about the advanced reactors that can uh, help contribute to, to solving those hard to debate sectors and uh, some of these other niche fields, uh, is that we can actually do a lot of that with our existing fleet um, as it stands. And, and as a matter of fact, when we think about something like hydrogen production, we have four uh, pilot projects going on in the United States right now to produce hydrogen from existing reactors. The demand we see for applications outside of electricity are, are definitely a part of the future we see for nuclear and some of the demand we see there. I think it's important to realize that all of these energy sources, regardless of whether they currently use electricity uh, or they use something like natural gas, they, they still need to be decarbonized. And so whether we take those industries and we electrify them, as you'll see with a lot of the uh, work being done with electric vehicles, uh, that's really just shifting the energy consumption we saw previously from transportation onto the grid. And so you would need to produce uh, more electricity to, to service those, uh, those demanders um, on grid. You know, the Dow X Energy Partnership that was announced uh, is a great example of how this can really work in the real world. You have a, a large chemical processing company like Dow that demands a lot of power, uh, and a lot of power that is, is honestly pretty hard to abate. It's uh, high temperature, uh, they need it 24 seven. And so when they really started looking at their decarbonization plans, they said, you know, we see a role for nuclear power here. Uh, and so that resulted in this deal, which not only uh, allows Dow uh, or provides X Energy the opportunity to deploy one of their reactors at a Dow site in the Gulf Coast, uh, but also Dow decided to take an equity stake in, in X Energy as part of that deal. And I think that was a, a really good vote of confidence and an example of how these deals can work in the future.